So people upgrade their computers all the time. Computers are modular, you can switch bits in and out. And of course, when you come across some cash, you're gonna wanna upgrade your machine. But one of the most popular upgrades to do is the RAM, especially in things like laptops. In laptops like this one here, everything has to be kept very compact and very small. And so most things are soldered to the motherboard. Generally, the CPU is, the graphics card is, almost everything is. There's going to be exceptions, but for the most part, that's a rule of thumb. With two general exceptions, the SSD or the storage, which generally is either a SATA connector on older ones or M.2 on newer, which is very popular to upgrade, or of course, the RAM, because of this here. This is Sodium RAM. It's smaller and made for mobile devices. And so for those who have laptop, who can't commit to a whole new machine, but still want an upgrade, people tend to upgrade the RAM a lot at times to crazy extents, especially if they're trying to do things like gaming on a laptop that just isn't a gaming laptop. But does upgrading your RAM actually get you more FPS and more performance? I wanna get into that today, do some testing, and show you yes or no, and explain why. And while I know I, I talked about laptops a lot, this is still very applicable to computers, as while a RAM upgrade isn't as common on a computer, as people will often do graphics cards, CPUs, it's a lot easier to get at an upgrade. RAM upgrades are still quite common because of how easy they are. For someone who is not a techie and doesn't necessarily understand all the techie terms, they can also see 32 gigs, 64 gigs, 16 gigs, 8 gigs, and see definitive numbers. A lot unlike CPUs, where you've got a 13900K, so surely that's better than the 7900, but one's a Ryzen, one's an Intel. Same with graphics cards, the numbers are all over the place. RAM has very definitive numbers, and so it's quite common for that to be a first upgrade. Everything I'm going to talk about is still very applicable here. While my testing will be done on laptops, everything I talk about applies to computers as well if you were to upgrade a computer's RAM, just so you know. And so let's get into testing. This is my first test machine. This is a Dell G15, which is a gaming laptop. It's a 5520 model. Model. It's got a 12th gen Intel i5, 4 performance cores, 8 efficiency cores, pretty good CPU. While it does have Intel Iris Xe graphics, all testing was done on RTX 3050, mobile edition. And while the memory is now 32 gigs, the first round of testing was done with 8 gigs and only one DIMM. The second round of testing was done with two DIMMs, 32 gigs, so that's a four times multiplier. The speed did not change though. That's the first laptop that I did testing on. Let's get into the testing. First of all, I ran it with only eight gigs of memory in there and I ran Portal 2, which ran at about an average of 200-ish FPS, which was very good. I then shifted across to Assassin's Creed Unity, which ran at about 50 to 40 FPS, which was again, pretty good. And then Titanfall 2, the campaign, which ran at close to 120 FPS, and the last one being the original 1993 Doom, which was running at close to 230 FPS, which was very good. I then switched in 32 gigs of RAM, and switched back to Portal 2, in which I was getting closer to 260 FPS as an average, which was a slight jump. I was getting very similar results on Assassin's Creed Unity. That one didn't really change, but then Titanfall 2 also didn't really change. Doom changed a little bit, jumped up maybe 10 FPS, but nothing significant, and overall, no significant jumps. Anything that did have a jump was already getting more than adequate FPS. So that one showed no major changes, maybe a few slight ups here and there, but nothing major. There was a few flaws in that test. As shown with the sticker here, this laptop has RTX. It has dedicated graphics. And what dedicated graphics generally means in a laptop is that it's also got its own dedicated memory, which it does. That graphics card has four gigabytes of dedicated VRAM memory. If I was running it on the Intel Iris Xe, then that would have its shared memory. But all the testing was done on the 3050. So while it did boost the RAM for the laptop, the CPU and the GPU, which are big contributors to FPS, didn't really change. So I got to thinking, how can I fix those flaws? Now, generally, if you're doing upgrades like this as well, you're doing it on a cheaper laptop. This is an old Lenovo laptop I just had lying around. It's pretty basic. It's got an AMD 3020e with Radeon graphics, which is a base speed of 1.2 gigahertz, two cores, two threads, integrated AMD Radeon graphic, which while it does have dedicated GPU memory again, admittedly, I will tell you in the testing, it very much digs into the shared memory, even before switching it. At the moment, it's got four gigs of DDR4 in it, and I jumped that up to 16. Again, same speed, this time even the same amount of slots used. Also, I don't know what it means by form factor row of chips, I mean, I'd hope so, but I jumped it up by four times and did testing. When it only had four gigs, I started testing with Doom 1993 again, which I got an average of about 113 FPS, which is pretty damn good. Even though admittedly it is an older game, 
I then went on to Half-Life 2, in which I got an average of 60 FPS, but I've always had issues with pushing that past that, I believe it's an engine issue. I then ran Portal 2, which only averaged at like 30 FPS, as well as Human Fall Flat, which averaged at closer to 20. I know the recording's buggy, but that's only the recording, not the actual performance. But then, after switching it to 16 gigs, again, Doom went up a very small amount, but nothing major. Half-Life 2 was still at 60 FPS. Portal jumped up about 20 to 30 FPS, which was pretty good, which is almost double. And Human Fall Flat ran a lot better. It went from like 15 to 35. So why did it change so much between those tests? And on the laptop that did change, why did it only change on two of the four games? Well, to, to understand that, we need to talk a bit about bottlenecks. Every computer will have a bottleneck. That is just inevitable with building computers. It is impossible to equally balance everything exactly. But what a bottleneck is, is every single computer is gonna have a weakest part. Whether it be the CPU, the GPU, and in some cases, the RAM. But the thing is, different games and apps will demand different things, and the, your computer will have different bottlenecks on different apps. Some games want a lot more CPU, which tends to lead to more RAM usage, but some games want a lot more GPU power. Some games want both, and just need a lot of punch to be able to run it, which means that while your system on on paper can have a bottleneck, if you've got a 3060 on an Intel Core i9 13th gen, of course, 3060 is going to be a bottleneck on paper and on the numbers. But depending on what you're using, that just might not be true. If you're doing something that barely touches your GPU but needs a lot of CPU, the CPU might be the bottleneck, which is what we're seeing here. The first gaming laptop was capable of running everything already, and the bottleneck in none of the cases was the RAM. But the other laptop, while it wasn't in all of the cases the RAM, especially when it's integrated graphics that is using shared memory. Integrated graphics on desktop processors are still shared memory. When you upgrade the RAM, it'll upgrade both the CPU and the GPU when it's shared memory, which makes upgrading the RAM a much bigger impact than it would with dedicated graphics. And the RAM was just the bottleneck in that system. In lower end systems, more often than not, a RAM upgrade will help your FPS a little bit, at least a little bit. Higher end systems generally not always so much, which is what, what we kind of saw in the gaming laptop. And so if you've got a machine like this, it's a bit weaker, but you want to use it for gaming or whatever, should you upgrade your RAM? My advice is to, one, make sure that RAM's the problem. See if the RAM is going near the top whenever you're running whatever you want to run. If it is, I would recommend, yes, upgrading your RAM. While if you upgrade it too far, you might never use enough to use it all. If money isn't an issue, there's no harm in having extra RAM. If money is an issue though, generally pre-builts won't need a massive upgrade. Like this could go up to 8 gigs and be fine. It did not need 16. So in the end, does more RAM equals FPS? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes no. And while it's important to note that on this machine here, while we didn't see a massive FPS jump, we were purely talking about gaming in this video. There are plenty of applications and reasons that someone might need a lot more RAM specifically. I use a lot of workloads that needed far more than eight gigabytes of RAM, which weren't necessarily gaming, because I do more than game on this. And so you've got to be really careful. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video about RAM. And if you did, please like and subscribe. That would help out a ton. I'm a small creator and I would really appreciate it. I'm going to a computer convention soon, being PAX Australia. My goal is to be at 1K before I get there, which we're getting close, so please subscribe. Comment down below what your specs are and if you've ever upgraded your RAM, how much buy and did it make a difference? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Bye-bye.